Reverend Temple Hayes. Welcome everyone and oh my, here we are again as intentional spirits. We're gathered together. We're, we're a tribe of people throughout the world and we just love the opportunity. I know I get so excited every week because I love learning and I've, I've said it often to my friends, my family and staff and communities along the way. When I stop talking about learning, please don't give me a microphone uh, because it's just crucial that we are exposed to these multi-dimensional, talented, amazing luminaries in the world. Um, and it helps us change our paradigm always. And I was so delighted to hear that today we have a Mira Hall, drum roll, a Mira Hall. And we're just so happy that, that she's here. Thank you for being on the show today. Uh, you're really, a, a, you have magic light and I, I just value you as a human being. So thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Reverend Temple. I am want to say that your smile is like a sunbeam. It's just <laughs> totally bright. And thank you. Thank you for that kind Hello. introduction. Well, you know, one of the things that we've somewhat, if you will, specialized in is we, and on our show, we talk about difference makers. We talk about people that are intentional and often I, this isn't like an original idea. I don't know if there are any really, but a recycled idea, of course, is that, and we've said it many times in many ways, we see people that are accomplished, or we see a mirror hall, or we see other people, and we go, wow, you know, they just, their life has worked, and they just flow, and, you know, and they just went from A to B, and it just happened. And, and what I like to present often is that there's a path, there's a journey. And many of us became who we are because we went through the pain from the cocoon to the butterfly. <laughs> or at least, you know, the, the shape shifting that brought us to who we are today. So were you always a clairvoyant? Was that in your, uh, on your wrist when you were born, she will be clairvoyant? in the baby nursery at the hospital or how did your path happen? I think you're close. I thought close. I was. That's what I'm picking up. That's what I'm because, picking up. Is and and you know, you my know answer my answer to that is I didn't always know it. And I would say that everybody is psychic. Every single person. We're, yeah. you know, coming into the human form, we're absolutely pure spirit. And we forget the amazing, magnificent, multifaceted aspects to who we are. And I think that whole, you know, grand scheme for us to fall into this amnesia, state of amnesia, to forget who we are, to simply climb back into the, the wondrous aspects to everything that we are. Sure, and I think that's the simplest synopsis of the journey for all of us is sure. remembering who we are. And... Mm -hmm. I think our clairvoyance, that ability to see, to perceive, to see through um, hidden uh, aspects mm -hmm. is a very high level spiritual gift that we all have. And for some people that don't think they have it, I promise you it can be developed. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've spent the last 22 years helping people. Firstly, myself, is to get reconnected with that. Yeah. Um, because I grew up in, a, in a, an all Catholic family and I was programmed <laughs> by our system to only believe what you see and to believe other people regardless of what you see. Yeah. And so I think my spiritual abilities, well, I don't think, I know my spiritual abilities were invalidated, like, much like most of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether it's fear or a lack of understanding or a need to control or dominate, whatever that might be, my spiritual um, gifts were turned down. Mm -hmm. And every time they turned on, I was invalidated and told, no, that can't be. There's no angel here with us, you know, right. or there's, you know, what you're sensing about, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> when absolute chaos was ready to descend on us. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I had, I grew up with an alcoholic family, um, father and very dysfunctional environment. I honestly, 
think that's normal <laughs> to have more dysfunction than yeah. that. So we used function. to think that was significant, you know. We used to stand in front of the room and say, perhaps some of you, if you feel comfortable raising your hand that you grew up in a dysfunctional family, we stopped asking that question. <laughs> Would everyone stand? Because we know that all of you grew up in a dysfunctional family. And the irony of that is, you know, as we uh, deepen our awareness, yeah. it's almost like we see, um, I, I'm not negating uh, the pain and the sorrow mm -hmm. and the you know, and I, I look at my own life probably walking around as a slow suicide moment because I almost <laughs> drank myself to death. I'm not making light of that. But when you look at the, what we would call the individuation of spirit, it's interesting how people like yourself, people like me of the light, old soul reality, we were born in a com community of family that, um, not only did they go, woo, you're weird, you know, but it was like you said, you were, you were shut down. And we live long enough to realize that for some of our family members or people that saw what we had, it was that sacred saboteur within them. Oh, I can't get into what Amira's doing or Temple's doing because that means that I've got to change. I've got to let go of these ideas that I've had, but like you said, I'm, a, I'm afraid of them. And so it, it, was, it was that interesting individuation, yes, of still being you while knowing that you weren't seen. And then when it came time for you to be seen, not to be shy about it. Did that, was that anything that occurred with you as far as in your teenage years? Or I would wanna go crawl in a, in a closet. They, they asked me in ministerial school to do a talk and I said, please don't call on me, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> Oh, I remember taking some speaker training years ago and I had an absolute meltdown before I had to do my speech. Mm -hmm. And then after I, I, I sobbed for a whole day, it was such a trauma for me. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, you know, and I, I really, it's been 24 years temple and spirit really gave me a super huge kick in the butt in December of just what, four months, five months ago, okay. where it's like, um, it's a mirror. It is the, it's curtain call. There is no, let's see how I feel. Let's play it easy, you know, and comfortable and safe. It was boom, wow. curtain, you know, curtains are pulling and you're on the, in the spotlight. And I don't mean that. It's like so many of us hold ourselves back. And perhaps we feel like, I remember in our earlier conversation, well, I'm waiting for spirit to tell me what my next step is. Right, right, right. <laughs> so yeah. we wait and we wait and we right. kind of feel safe because I think as a sensitive, we were kicked around for quite a bit of time, right? And you've been on your path a long time as well. It's like, geez, I, I'm, I'm kind of bruised. I don't really right. want to fan my peacock tails here and, and, and really show all the colors and aspects to myself because I might be beat up, Absolutely. right? So, Absolutely. so it's learning how to manage what I refer to as managing my energy field mm -hmm. so that I am not attacked or they can attack all they want but the, the, the density or the the you could use healed mm -hmm. uh refined might be a better word of our energy field the less invaded it can be the less porous it becomes it becomes a natural decoy to outside energies and maybe getting older i'm a sensitive cancerian in the first place but getting older it's like you know what, you can say what you want. It's not going to bother me anymore. Right, it's going right. to be a water off a duck's back, you know? That's right. That's right. Yeah, I'm not, and I, you know, I, I'm not into <clears throat> being old. I know I age, but old, <laughs> old is a choice and nobody's going to put that on me. But it, it's interesting as you're talking, I'm just really, I, I love your energy. And I was thinking earlier when you were talking, a mirror, it's like you are a mirror to people, a mirror. You understand. So I was thinking about that, of how you are such a, a great reflection. Thank you, know, you so much for that. In, in, in your work. And that was coming up for me, you know, really, really strong. You are a mirror. You know, it's and, you're, you're right? triggering 
I'm so sorry. And, and no, no, no. Uh, uh, we don't have an agenda. We're free. Yeah, yeah. With, no, it, it reminds me of a memory I, of, of a, when I first started my journey way back in San Diego. Um, I was I started by reading Coffee Grounds. Uh -huh. and people couldn't understand oh that's so yeah cool. well it, and and so spirit sort of just booted me out and I started finding myself going on to coffee houses and and asking them if I could read coffee grounds and okay. so I'd be looking in this little cup of mud and people couldn't understand how I could see so much about their life in a little thing of mud and I remember one of the ladies her name was Cindy and she owned Red's coffee shop and Cindy said to me she had a dream one night and she finally understood the meaning of my name and they told her in the dream it was I am raw so taking wow. the eye out of it wow. and i am raw so i am light i am and i just love that i mean it wasn't in anything intended for me to right, right. you know define or hold on to but it's wonderful when someone else reflects back to you mm -hmm. something that you don't see in yourself isn't it it is it, you know it, it it really is but it, it, that was just coming up you know thank you for that gift so uh so strong in me and um i've already had people contacting me saying how can i get in touch with amira how can oh. I, how can i connect <laughs> with her so what website do we want people to go to and how does someone have a session with you because you've got a you got a list of people already waiting oh well thank you so much um it's amirahall.com and that's okay. a m i r a h an H A L L. So okay. two H's. Amirahall.com and on the website they can yes. contact and make yes. an appointment. Okay. Absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's very clear. Um, yes. Because I, I love it when people reach out to me and say, Oh, I I definitely I need to have an appointment with her and that that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, names are to me, it's uh, names are just very, you know, hallow it be then thy name. They're they're holy. And we carry them all our lives. It, it fascinates me when people have a name that they apologize for, or wish they didn't have it, or it doesn't resonate with them. Or I <clears throat> used to date a guy that would uh, introduce himself and give his whole name. And it was kind of hard to understand and spell. And then he would do all that. And they'd say, okay, I look forward to seeing you in the future. And he goes, oh, no, don't call me any of that. You know, call me Jack. It's like... <laughs> I went, I said, you don't understand. That's just way overload. Just tell them what you want to be called, you know? Exactly. Yeah. The you know, same way like you, it's like temple is like, you know, like obviously known as a building, you know, it was my grandfather's middle name, but it's like, okay, it's like a building. It's like a, it's like a building. Like, okay, I'm su supposed to be in alignment with spiritual values. Okay. I get that. But the other piece was, you know, the temple is the body of the, of the living Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And, you know, and that would have come in handy if I'd really taken that serious all these years on my strength. <laughs> I know. Isn't that funny? Oh, well, well, you know, temple. I kind of miss that. I mean, I think that's called denial, but I mean, wow. yeah. Well, <laughs> on denial, that's where I had my near death experience on denial <laughs> in Egypt. And that yeah. is when I changed my name. Okay, I want to hear all about this in so, our audience. So tell us, tell us, tell us, so, don't you all back now. So we started, <laughs> we started on the on the vein of the names and the importance. Oh. And I was born Deborah. And I it's not I'm that not I never I, not I, 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 I never resonated with it. I mean, I didn't not resonate. I didn't know anything different, right? Right, right. And it wasn't until I was planning my trip to Egypt. And the, the host of the trip said to me, do you have a name you'd like to use on the trip? And I thought, geez, that's a peculiar question. Why would anybody ask me that? I've got a passport name, it's Deborah. Why wouldn't I use that? To, that to me, otherwise would make a big mess with a group of travelers, et cetera. So that night getting into the bed, I was I turned off the light, ready to snuggle in. And the light flashed. And at that moment, I had a, a thought, use the name Amira. Mm -hmm. 
And that name was given to me several years before, three years in fact, by a spiritual teacher. He told me it meant something same as Deborah. But I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm not changing my name. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> I was born Canadian. We don't do that shit, right? <laughs> and so I know it's so Hollywood and all that, but that was the thought I had. And and, and that night when, when it came to me, use the name Amira, I called the host back for the trip and I said, I'll use the name Amira. And I didn't know about any of the logistics, how that would work. And when I got to Egypt, I was introduced to the group, to all the travelers and anybody we met along the way as Amira. And everybody greeted me. They would say, welcome home, sister. Welcome home. And I was like, wow, I, I, I like this. <laughs> I like how this is going. I get on the bus with an armful of treasures and gifts from the Egyptians. And everybody was getting jealous at me. Like, how is she getting all this free crap? <laughs> and it wasn't crap. It was nice. And, right. and, and I was like, wow, I love the feeling of this. I can get into this really easy. When then the trip was off the charts, incredible spiritual journey. Have you ever been to Egypt? No. And well, yet I have very strong past lives from there. Well, no, no doubt. It, no doubt about it. Yeah. I'm asking because I'm planning a trip this October. And so we have another spiritual journey that this will be my 13th trip, I think, to Egypt. And yes, trips to yeah, Egypt? Yeah. So, so back oh, to the name word. change. I had my near-death experience there after my, my spiritual journey was, was uh, complete. I extended my stay. I was on my own. That's when I had this, the near-death experience. And that's when I knew, and I kept saying, it was like my clock stopped and started again. And I knew I was a different person. I was same body, same everything. But that's when I started using officially Amira. I came home, changed all the documentation and became an American citizen. And the rest is history. It's been 24 wow. years. Yeah. That's incredible. And, and my life literally changed. And so you hear stories in, in, in Judaism and um, Islam. If a person's having a difficult life, they, they change their name because it is a vibration. And it will literally change the dynamics and aspects of your life. It's not an easy feat. And just like when women are married, we change our last name. That changes everything. Yeah. 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 And, it, it, and in so many ways, it's so odd that we still do that in, you know, 2021. And, and many say, I don't want to. Yeah, many are shifting yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, many are shifting. But 13 times. Well, that's definitely something that has had deep meaning to you. Egypt calls you, Temple. Yeah. Egypt calls you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't leave you the same. Yes. The, um, the perception of how your spiritual gifts really are expanded, your sense of awareness and, um, connection perhaps past lives um the, the soul brothers or star mm -hmm. brothers and sisters mm -hmm. all of that becomes very real yes. and it's hard to in our reality here in the west actually hold that vibration for long periods of time so i think when you step into the sacred energy step back into soul's awareness of previous lifetimes it, it just sends a reverberation through your system that there's no going back. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's, it's mysterious, magical, and transformational and all. And yeah. So when you um, started um, doing your work as a, as a clairvoyant, did you, did you just walk into the role? Did you go, here I am. This is what I was born to do. And let's go from here. Or was it an evolution? Was it a process? Did you do other things um, professionally or, or spiritually before you became, you know, the person that you are today? I, at the time, I was working as a, I had a successful sales career in San Diego, <clears throat> selling technology, but there was something missing in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, that's when I started a curious search 
for spiritual journeys. The previous year I had been to Peru and worked in the Amazon with a shaman. And then that year in Egypt, that was the next step, next phase for me. But what happened in the near death experience was so traumatic for me that when I came home, um, that I, when I got off the jetway, so I had a near death experience and that's a whole nother, maybe for the next segment, but coming back to the US was where everything really hit because I got off the jetway in JFK and everybody looked like black and white paper dolls. So I, I, I couldn't understand. I felt the energy of grief and anger and despair and just misery. And I'm thinking, this is the US and I can't come back here. So it was a journey as I shifted out of that perception of seeing everybody as black and white paper dolls, by the time I landed in San Diego, I, I knew something was different. I knew I was different. I knew, I didn't know what happened exactly. This was in 1998. So we didn't have, you know, internet really. Sure. And, and so I never had a reference point. I started going to a lot of different psychics trying to figure out what happened to me. And they all gave me some different answer. And so that's when I finally like, duh, you know, it's an inside job. Here. You got to get your own answers. And that made me madder at God. You know, I was really so tangled up and miserable and depressed. I fired my family. I fired my friends and hobby and you got fired. And um, I started on a journey. Someone, I, I found one healer in Northern California that actually said, oh, you've got stuck energy. And that was a big aha moment for me because I like to be able to have something tangible that I can do with it. You know, energy is so nebulous anyway, but that was back then, 1998, that was, I think, my first awareness or understanding and the information I gleaned from when I was out of my body, the quantum field started to come together for me. And I started to understand that if I could see something, like if I can see a smudge on a window, and I have a cloth and some moisture, I can remove it, right? If you know what you're looking at and how to extract or remove or dissolve the block, to me, that was gold. And that's when I started to learn how to heal me. Yeah. I started to remove the blocks within me first. And then I remember telling one of my teachers, don't think I'm doing this professionally. <laughs> she laughed at me and I'm like, you know, how dare you? How, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> Here I am, 24 years later. It looks like the joke was on me, right? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> you know, um, I, I kind of um, define that as there's, there's, there's a difference of understanding our personality versus the work of our soul. Yes. And, and I was the same way moving out west to California and leaving the entire opposite of the east coast in a community of 18 years you know doing ministry for 30 plus oh, science gosh. and mind and unity i'm bi-spiritual and i my personality was just very clear i was going to take a six month or a year off and and i was going to do this and that and explore who i am in my beingness you know and um you know i didn't even hardly hit the ground <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, and I kept flying. I understand we have choice, so I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. There's always choice, but when your soul downloads, you know, like yours did, mm -hmm. and like mine continues to, it, oh, and it, still does, it's absolutely. It's, it's a continual it's the, evolution. It, it, it's it's the moment. It's like when the minister was here, and she said, "Well, I I'm going to be leaving. Do you want to come here?" And I said, "No." But I'll tell you that my nose haven't been that successful. <laughs> I said no to the community I was at for 18 years. So I don't know that that's going to work because ultimately my yes is I want to express spirit to the greatest capacity of my being. And that's yours. You know, and you're I living to, in your I purpose. I want to serve. Absolutely. I, I want to be a catalyst. But one of the things that we're kind of weaving into this uh, beautiful conversation we're having today is the significance for those of you that are turning tuning in either now or online or on YouTube 
the significance is practitioner heal thyself. And Absolutely. it's not perfectionism. It's no. not waiting until you don't have any problems anymore or anything, because you'll be doing your real work in the afterlife. I'm talking about practitioner heal thyself so that you are a catalyst. Because what happens with a lot of healers and therapists and psychics is they have their stuff and their stuff creates the filters and the perception. Example, Amira, is that we have therapists that are working through their stuff while they're doing therapy on others. And so thus, if they haven't dealt with some of their pain and their sorrow, they almost knock somebody down to give them a Kleenex because they're not comfortable with them crying. You know what I, I mean? love so that. I that love was what... the space that I became so aware of as I've worked even with other healers or choosing people that I want to work with if they're not comfortable like the Hopi elder says. Absolutely. I am or they, it's all about they keep bringing their story into my story. It, it's like practitioner heal thyself. Well, we have another after break, we have another few minutes, uh, actually 30 uh, to be together. This is wonderful. I'm enjoying being here. I'm all perked up now. I've had the Amira fix. You can go to amirahall.com, A-M-I-R-A-H hall.com. And for those of you that were curious about making an appointment, you can do that. You can join me at templehaze.com. And as you know, Unity of Online Radio will be closing at on April 14th. And we all are going to be doing something. So stay connected and, and follow us around. All right. We'll be Beautiful. right back after this short break. Thank you. Okay. Three and a half minutes. Welcome back to The Intentional Spirit with Reverend Temple Hayes. Welcome back, everyone. And I tell you, I'm, uh, I, I know that uh, they say that the, the only person that likes the word change is a baby. Uh, however, I have definitely been addressing a lot of change in, in the last year. And the change of Unity Online Radio just almost put me over the top. I'm like, what? I mean, this is my go-to, this is my anchor and, and Jeff Comfort and Lewis and the team and Diane Ray, you know, who is the most amazing ever as a director manager. And um, I'm, I'm still processing it really because this has been uh, some of the greatest moments of, of my life. And it's a, it's a real loss. It's, it's a real loss. And right now we are talking about now and uh, we are all looking at Amira today and we're looking at the person Amira Hall. And so here we are and we were talking about, you know, the importance as an intentional spirit of what you're drawn to and what you know is true inside as far as people that you want to work with. I know my shaman said to me, in my 10 years of training, I didn't become one on a weekend, but through a lot of training and a lot of, lot of tough times, okay? Uh, she said that um, she hardly would let anybody work on her body mm -hmm. because their energies have to be right. Right. And um, their energies have to be right. Or what we were talking about, Amira, is their consciousness has to be right. Mm -hmm. Or... There's a depth there because they have been through X, Y, and Z, and now they have a new alphabet of how to live. And what I was saying to you during break that I didn't say out loud is that, you know, I've always been fascinated with people that, you know, go to a, a practitioner, holistic or traditional, well, let's say about losing weight. And that person is very overweight. I'm not saying that's not part of someone's incarnation, but I wouldn't go to a person that's way overweight to talk about what do I do to lose weight or how to have a relationship when that person hasn't had one. And I think that's part of it. We're so quick. We're so quick to just sign up for something, especially when they go, you know, I usually charge, you know, $3,000, but today you can get me for, you know, one ninety nine. <laughs> We don't interview. <laughs> we don't interview the person 
that's going to influence our lives. But anyway, I said, you start and I just rambled on. I well, no, we're in a drive through <laughs> the Coke or the coffee's helping. Yeah. Okay. The, um, we're in a drive through society. And I think in the last few years, it's been amplified with our uh. you know, dependence on the internet. And, you know, I've seen a lot of new healers be presented come out you know do their debutante kind of pre presentation and and they've got these flashy programs and it sounds and looks good on paper and it's all the bells and whistles are there and i can get supercharged and have all my spiritual abilities activated in you know a weekend or yeah. a week or just download this program and you're good to go you know and i just want to say it's all BS. It's spiritual BS. And I guess if you get sucked into that, you get to learn your lesson. And I'm like to, you know, prevent people from, you know, learning those hard lessons and taking their time vetting a person, mm -hmm. getting to know them, and listening to them following them, and understanding that there is something to be said for the wisdom and the time in the trenches, right, the spiritual right. trenches and processing. And <clears throat> you know, people want their pineal gland opened or their third eye open. That seems to be a big buzzword, right? In terms of clairvoyance. And again, you know, it's trickery. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I remember I was reflecting back on a meditation I had when I was sitting in Egypt. I was at her, her gata on the, at the uh, uh, Black Sea. It just escaped me. And I asked spirit, this was in, in 2009, there was a lot of buzz about this great spiritual awakening. And I asked for myself, I mean, you could read all the books, you could ask anybody else and all these so-called sure. gurus and experts out there, right? I asked and he said, my guide said to me, imagine today you're a caterpillar and tomorrow you're a butterfly. Mm. Wow. And beware, there will be many charlatans amongst you. Mm -hmm. So in that very short statement, there's a lot to unpack. And of course, we love the, the metaphor of being that in that chrysalis and stepping into that butterfly phase. And I think many of us are still in the chrysalis. I think it, you and I are even in a very, you know, a stage of being in chrysalis into a bigger butterfly or into a bigger version of ourselves, right? Oh, yeah. And to be able to truly fly and, and to be neutral. I think getting to be neutral is part of this discernment and the growth process that we start to embody, right? No judgment, because as we step out of this 3D reality, as we want to step into that 5D, you know, ability to manifest and just being in it, we have to drop that good, bad, right, wrong. Sure into a, a bigger fullness and and this is when we were talking about you know either or you know it, it's it's amazing how it's black and white or either or or good bad right wrong uh, yeah and that um one of the best things somebody told me years ago was a therapist that i had called him about something and he said temple it's about both and and, and it changed my life both and instead and, and of something there's an integration absolutely instead of separation and, and division so and when it, somebody comes to me and say well let's say i want to fix my relationship how can i or am i going to get divorced as an example that seems to be a big one right and i'll just say well why does it have to be that Right. What, what would you like to create? Because we've got to get to the place of our energy is creating our future result. Right. So what can we shift or release within ourselves that can create the ultimate dream or reality or goal? That's powerful. We and work, I think we work very similarly because my question would be, what part of yourself are you needing to divorce from? Yeah, because, you know, it's that saying, I stopped looking for the right person and I became the right person. So as we know, we can we can divorce somebody 
But if we don't integrate the parts we're divorcing out of ourselves, we wind up with someone a whole lot cuter. They make great photographs, but we still have the same issues. Oh, come on. Great Instagram family moments. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember a lady that came to me in San Diego. And I remember as I was in my space, I go into a light trance doing my work. And I remember seeing her husband and he looked like the biggest, ugliest monster on the planet or that I could even conceive of. And I just went, oh man, this guy's dark. It, the energy's bad. It's just like, I wanted to say, run for the hills, right? Like this is bad. And, and I remember hearing spirits say, never mind what you see, do what you do. And so I started just moving the energy because that's what I do. I can see the energy, shift the energy to give you a different real results. The lady called me six months later and said to me, Amira, I don't know what you did, but I had divorce papers in my purse and I never divorced him. He is a completely different man. Oh, wow. Well, what see? a success story. So I teach people, other practitioners, how to get ultimately completely neutral to what they're seeing because that as uh, when we started in our, this conversation the healer having to get completely neutral what we're seeing what we perceived my own experiences i had to get out of the way to do the magic and completely separate myself from what i was visualizing and mm -hmm. not to program her i've had so many people call me and say oh this psychic told me that i was going to my daughter was going to die of a drug overdose and my daughter doesn't even do drugs and i'm like no 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 no. first of all that's like out of integrity second of all what would you like to create you know right? i would love i would love for this sounds so cruel people that have claimed a position of influence and persuasiveness to say those kind of things, I think they should be arrested because they, they kill the spirit of a human being. Because yeah. with what you're saying, I had somebody do, do that to me one time. I thought she was coming over just for a, to talk about marketing, you know, and, um, and so, but, but she did readings and, um, and she said, and, and she thought she was doing one because she thought she was doing one. I just went along with it and I paid her, you know, all that. But that being said, you know, she was like, oh, don't be concerned. You know, I saw the lab coats, you know, I saw them doing things and, but you're going to be okay. The good news is you're going to be okay. And you know, I, I, I will tell you, I wouldn't let another time like that pass me by. Mm -hmm. I, and all you can do is do better next time. But I, the me today, I would say, I dared you. Do not ever do that to a human being. Because well, they're, you're programming them. Even and, you're, and they're going that, to create even that. Even me knowing I'm the healthiest person I've met and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. It was like, I wonder what she was talking about. You know, and a year later, someone, I go, wonder if the, you know, and, yes. and, and what it was is unless she was seeing, you know, when I'm, you know, 200 years old, what it was, was that I went in one of those booths because, you know, I don't go to the doctor or anything, but I went in one of those little booths that measures your EKG and, you know, all these oh, things, man. four things. And a friend of mine said, oh, they're doing it right down the street. Why don't you go? And I go, well, okay. And I went and they had lab coats and everything. And I went, oh, well, that's wow. what she saw. And I, I dissipated it. But like you're saying, the power of the mind and the influence, it's like shame on anybody that says future stuff like that. I, I do soul retrieval on people from all over. Mm -hmm. And Amira, I see some very interesting stuff in the underworld. Yeah, so it's I not pretty. Not, I don't <laughs> say it. I don't say uh, you were raped. What? No, exactly. I don't do yeah. that. I, I don't need to feed yeah. my ego that way. I will say, did something happen between mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you were somewhere between 10 and 15 that, that you recall? And, 
and they will go, oh yeah, or whatever. And then I will, once I know, they know, but you can destroy someone's life literally. Yep. And, and that's, that's key because I think a lot of uh, teachers, mentors, healers out there haven't done the deep work. Yeah. And, and they haven't got the, the, the mentor, the training to assist them in serving the people. They might have done a healing retreat, but they still don't know the nuances of caring for that soul, like exactly. with tender gloves, the exactly. heart and the soul together. Mm-hmm. And that you're literally programming an individual and they will create based on your words mm-hmm. and what you've in implanted. Fear. So I, I really am very careful at... And that's very much part of my curriculum yeah. is let's re let's re look at this. Let's evaluate this. Is this really what you're seeing? And to start digging deeper, you know, and, and being able to see and, and developing it. It's not just trusting the damn cards, you know, because yeah, it's you know, interpretation had, of the cards. And people had enough influence when they were kids and their parents told them all the things they weren't going to be able to do or their teacher or I always laugh when I think about my sixth grade teacher, I was in trouble, and, you know, but my dad gave me sugar on toast and sent me to school. Come on, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a sugar sensitive human being and I'd be off the chart and I was bright and I was bored and I could have taught the class. And so I acted out, but she told my parents, oh, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but Temple is never going to amount to anything. Oh, she, no. Because she talks too much. <laughs> and I've you made my entire living off talking. But, um, Guess what? My report cards always came back. Um, Debbie, that was, Debbie would be such a good student if she didn't talk so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sister. Here we are. <laughs> that is too funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Too funny. And, it, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing that through the individuation of spirit, we didn't buy that. Yeah, we, because we thrived. We would have, most people will, or a lot of people will, and they'll say, well, talking can't be my thing because it used to get me in trouble. I need to find a profession where I don't have to talk. You and know? they shut it down they or they hold down. back and they withhold. And that really blocks the fifth chakra. Not only your communication with your higher self, your loved ones, your angels, and, and your creative channels, just being able to flow and give to the world. I would say, you know, you are a creator. You're here to create whatever that might be. Yeah. You know, and by blocking and stopping all that, guess what? You create dis-ease, exactly. dysfunction, yeah. and That's death of dreams, way. death of goals, death of relationships and careers. And it just all, you know, shrivels up. Mm-hmm. No doubt. No doubt. Well, one of the things that you highlighted early on when we first started talking is you were talking about that, and and please, I want you to come back and say, well, what I meant was, or you heard it and what I really, but you were talking about energy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, ever so often, I like to envision, hold the space of where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. And and realizing there's a human body and a human Mm -hmm. suit, doing my part, Mm -hmm. you know, to be vibrant, to be youthful, to not be on medication and, you know, all those stories. But I, I put in motion that I was being interviewed on TV shows and that they were asking me, how do you have so much energy? I just, you have so much energy. So I put that in motion years ago. Now I, I'm required a certain responsibility with that, the food I eat, you know, mm-hmm. the taking care of my beingness and, you know, all those things. So it wasn't like, poof, poof, bewitched. Oh, uh, come on. It is so. <laughs> but, you know, but that, yeah. but that being said, it's interesting now because I get asked that a lot. Oh. I get asked that a lot. But you How just embraced it. Do you have so much energy? But my point is, I'm simply highlighting what you said. You Mm -hmm. can create it. You can put it in motion. You lay it out before you, the ask and it is given, and you step and you become it. But now what I envisioned or heard or created 
is now happening. It's manifesting. And, well, Dr. Um, Bruce you Lipton. Were that too, as far as your energetic presence and that I thought, whoa, I like that because that's how I feel. So anyway. Well, I, in one part I didn't share is in 1991, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and the doctors told me death or wheelchair. That's two hard choices. To believe. That's so hard to believe. Right. About and, you. and, and really that was a, that was probably the first step in my spiritual awakening is because I was forced to muster up my own power determination. And that's when I was started studying with science of mind, Mm -hmm. religious science. And I started to grapple with the idea that I'm creating my reality. Of course, it was very difficult because I was so depressed. A little over little time passed and I started getting stronger. I had to do everything opposite to what allopathic medicine prescribed. Sure. And that was my liberation from Western medicine. Wow. And I think, and, and to, to this day, I'm continually living that. Dr. Bruce Lipton, who was the front runner pioneer in, in, in uh, the biogenome, in his book, The Biology of Belief, said that we can change our DNA you know, when the doctors tell me that, you know, oh, it's in the family, high blood pressure. No, I don't care if it's in my family or not. Right. Ain't going to happen for this girl, right? And my blood pressure has gone up from time to time. And I realize, you know what, back off the salt or, or do, you know, take a little more time to meditate. Right. Do the things that you can do that will create those ebbs and flows in a way that's more harmonious for my body. Getting to know the physical, the mental, emotional, and spiritual. There's an integration that we all are on. I think there's a quite a continual journey of that, right? Oh yeah. As long as we're in a body. And I know that people are going to say I'm judgmental. Well, whatever. But I mean, facts are facts. I mean, when you just look Mm -hmm. at the simplicity of unity, unity was founded because a woman refused to buy into the DNA concept, the heredity concept, because she yeah. was told she was going to die of tuberculosis because it was in her family. Yep. And it very good makes me when unity people buy into you're going to have this because your aunt did and your cousin did and your sister did. And it's like nothing could be further from the truth. Yep. You know, yep. it's like because you're doing things they didn't do. Or you know, because they can't you're, control me. You're I'm, changing I re- your life and things like that. And it's a very different path than what my parents did. My father was a rageaholic. I mean, he would get up in the middle of the night and eat sugar. Uh, come on, I don't do that. <laughs> no, no, that's, you know, that's like dynamite. No wonder he was raging, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, if, you, if, we, if we make different decisions, um, it is true. We don't have to have those same results. So. Yeah, I refuse to. And I think that's what we all need to sort of wrap our heads around, because I think more than ever, we've been influenced by the outside. It's really front row and center, you know, with the last two years. And what do you choose, right? Are you going to be uh, overridden with fear? And that will dominate you and limit you in your dreams and your creations and, and the way you are? You know, I think yeah. I, I'm grateful for that period because I'm with you because of it, yeah. right? It's forced me to come together with others that, that we get each other, right? Oh, yeah. And we can no, say, no. Oh, you know what? No. <laughs> to every... We're a mirror. <laughs> yeah, mirrors to each other. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. Absolutely. So what uh, are you doing on a, on a day-to-day basis now? Are you uh, doing a lot of readings? Are you traveling? I mean, because we're coming out of a, a season, you know, that we've been in for a long time. So what's your life look like? I've been, uh, meditation is a daily part of my day. Okay. I have been having many more uh, mentoring clients that I work with. Um, I do a virtual small group every Wednesday where it's an opportunity for someone who's just learning about me to come and have a mini reading or a mini discussion. And we cover everything from messages from our loved ones on the other side of life to, you know, channeled messages from the divine or from uh, angels 
to, hey, I got, you got stuck energy, you know, in your leg and, and this is how you can shift it. So I teach people the basic principles of getting themselves unstuck. Because I think we all get stuck from time to time. We all just need to learn how to get out of that. Mm -hmm. And it can happen so quickly, so easily. And we don't have to, you know, spend hours in therapist's sofa, you know, rehashing the BS and all the trauma that we went through. Um, I get that it's real. And I've been there too. And I like to get to the bottom, bottom rung and make it happen, you know? Right we don't need to suffer any more than necessary. It's never necessary, I guess, but we just get stuck. Yeah. Yeah. So I I'm creating and, and my practice is to be in the moment, mm -hmm. you know, I take myself on a walk um, along the San Gabriel river every day. Um, so after this, I'll go for my walk and the Cardinals have been coming to me on a regular basis. Wow, I love messages. them. I love yeah. them. Um, what about the, what part of Texas? I'm in, in central Texas, north okay. of Austin, okay. north of Austin, a small community called Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, there's a small uh, town center that was built in the 1800s. And there's all kinds of hauntings around there. So I pick and choose where I go, but I've actually yeah. engaged with them. And the people here are pretty open about it. Oh, yeah, you know, the lady in white, you know, she just, the lady, the ghost lady. Well, have you love uh, Cardinals? I love Cardinals. Have, have you read A Red Bird Christmas by Fanny Flagg? No, I haven't. Order it. Okay. It's beautiful. A Red Bird Christmas by Fanny Flagg. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank yeah, you. It's, uh, it's one that once you start, you can't can't put it down. It's built around a small town. And anyway, I don't want well, to. I've never seen anymore. Cardinals until I moved here. Yeah. And it's always There's been a the, lot I, of them. We don't have them here in uh, Santa Barbara. Or I, I haven't know. seen one yet. I don't. I never seen one. them in California. I ever. Don't think yeah. you, you know, yeah. they're, that they're here. But uh, I love them. I just light up like. Oh, me too. Know. Well, because they're they're the totem for, for spirit, for yes. spirituality. And um, I used to see them all the time outside of my office in St. Petersburg. And I just, you know, no matter what I was doing, I would be doing a live interview. Oh, it just, Otherwise, it's... I would just stop and go, whoa, wait a minute, let's walk, yeah. you know, and it would be yeah. all from the male and female or, or, or two males. And it just like, it, it time stood still. Because they're, they're so social, right? Yeah, and they're, yes. they're such a social. Yes. Yeah, so I, I send them a message before when I get out of my car, like, here I am, I'm coming. Right. And sometimes I'll get right to the end of my little walk and they'll show up. You know, it'll be like, oh, there they are. Hello. <laughs> you know, so that bright and brightens me my day. Yeah. Right. And uh, what else? I, you know, I eat in alignment with my body. And so I pay attention to what I'm eating when, you know, fasting intermittent mm -hmm. fasting, um, getting my exercise, getting sun on my skin. Yeah. And really just, I don't know, I think my life is pretty simple. Mm -hmm. It's not overly jam packed. I like it to flow when it starts getting edgy. Um, then, well, I don't, I don't get into that phase anymore. I mean, yeah, we, when people tell me that they can't fit anything in. I'm like, yeah. then you need to back yeah. off some yeah. stuff in your life. That's right. Well, it's incredible that our time has come to a close and thank you, Amira Hall. I, I see our past crossing again. Thank I you. I really want to say thank you for being with us and being on the show and, and bringing your bright light. Everyone, it's Amira Hall. Dot com or you can go to my Facebook and you can find her on there the information so many many blessings thank you thank you and many blessings to you and everyone listening yeah.